Hey, hey, what's up, y'all? This is Toby D, and you have tuned in to Pound for Pound. Yes, we've gotten past our first official preseason week one in the books, and there's so much I want to talk about. But there are some key things that I believe that are not being mentioned that stuck out more to me. So that's what I'm going to try to stay on right now. Um, Not much of the obvious, but digging deeper underneath the surface. And the first thing that popped out to me is Mr. Big Beasley getting to the ball carrier on the first official first and 10 play after Miami took a timeout. Now, this is significant because it shows that Vic Beasley is trying to enhance that side of his game. I've seen it shine through in practice. I was at that padded practice where he basically thudded um, like a brick wall, Devontae Freeman to the ground. Devontae Freeman getting all about two yards while meeting Big Beasley there in the hole. And then if you saw the clip, which unfortunately I wish I was there for and weren't there, where Dick Beasley causes Tevin Coleman to fumble the ball coming out the backfield carrying the rock. And we're seeing Dick Beasley translate that side of his game into the preseason. And I'm hoping that continues into the regular season as well. Because if he gets that part of his game together with an already potent pass rush, He may not get 15 sacks this season, but he's going to definitely become an all-around player, whether it's pass rush, run defense, and dropping back in coverage when called upon to do so. The other thing that stood out to me was Mr. Marquand Manuel calling the plays without a play call sheet. Now, this number one shows that Marquand Manuel wants to be able to call the game based on the flow of how the game is going. So it's mainly about feel for him. Number one, he already knows this defense like the back of his hands. And it was showing clearly evident when he was calling the plays on Thursday night. Now, number two, Dan Quinn already mentioned that they weren't scripting plays in practice. And this is going to help both Steve Sarkeesian and Marquand Manuel Because you never know when you go in with a game plan if it's going to show up the way that you wrote it up before you get to the game. And so these guys are going to be able to adjust quickly to how the flow is going. Now, you saw Steve Sarkeesian, of course, did have a play call sheet up in the press box. But he wasted no time getting to work after that punt return by Andre Roberts, which I believe both the punt return and kickoff return is his job to lose, by the way, because he's already looked early on, albeit preseason one, impressive in both phases of that aspect. So giving us that short field advantage allows Steve Sarkeesian and Matt Ryan and Devontae Freeman to already go to work and get a score which allowed Matt Ryan and Devontae basically to now sit on the bench and watch the game uh, as a fan because their night was done and that didn't end there guys on more than one occasion we were able to get good field position Marvin Hall popped off a nice punt return, allowing our third and fourth team units to come out there and go down there and score with Mr. Tyron Ward, who was already having a marvelous night, albeit preseason one. But I believe he sent a statement out to Mr. Rookie Brian Hill, one of our fifth round picks, that if you want this job, buddy, you got to come with it because Mr. Tyron Ward was catching the ball smoothly and he was running the ball smoothly when we were finally able to pop off some good runs after struggling a little bit in our run game earlier on uh, with the first and second team units. So that is definitely something exciting to see. Mr. Brian Hill, you know you got some work to do um, because you weren't able to really run the ball like you wanted and you did have a few issues in the special teams punt and kickoff um, coverage units. Speaking of that, Mr. Keith Armstrong, my message to you. Brother, you've gotten the kickoff and punt return on lock. You got three guys capable of returning it in Andre Roberts. And like I said before, it's his job to lose uh, Marvin Hall and Reggie Davis. So that's cool. But let's get this kickoff and punt coverage units together because it was looking kind of sloppy. We gave up a few big runs uh, on that side of things. Now, let's talk about Mr. Reggie Davis. 
Was it me or did this guy look like our poor man's Antonio Brown the way he caught that pass and cut it back across the field quickly to score? Now, unfortunately, our tight end, Mr. Eric Salva, number 85, had a penalty there. And that was just one of his two penalties, which took back some positive gains uh, for the Atlanta Falcons and a score. So, Mr. Wade Harmon will definitely have to work on that side of his game of understanding how long um, to block somebody and when to disengage from that player. But the other thing that I noticed is that the defense was communicating and they were communicating and trusting each other an awful lot on the field. Albeit preseason where the teams are going into their third installation of their offense and defense um, before going into the regular season and getting to the dress rehearsal, which is the third preseason game. We saw where the defense knew what was coming, giving out the alerts and getting where they needed to be making plays on the ball for the most part, with the exception of a few blips uh, within that game where they missed a few things and a few cues and may have reacted a split second too late um, in making plays on the ball. We also saw the limp come out. We saw Devontae Campbell reach his long arms up and snag a ball down. Could have had a touchdown if it were not for two reasons, him stepping out of bounds, making that play, and also Joe Volano, who also flashed big time, um, hitting someone going out of bounds. But man, there were so many great things that happened and those were the biggest things that popped out to me that I'm looking to see continue going into the Pittsburgh Steelers Heinz Field to play them. I'm definitely excited about seeing how much we improve from the time that we saw preseason one going into preseason week two because there will be a lot more installed going into that game to stress our teams out offensively and defensively. But now that's all for me, man. Please continue to share, like, comment. Let me know what you're feeling after a few days and processing that preseason week one game. Uh, what you saw in there. Hey, again, it's Toby D. Peace. I'm out.